family, family. Japan, what can I say? Crazy trip. Anyway, today we're gonna get into my itinerary, everything I did from beginning to end. So if you're looking to go, this is probably a good video for you just to see, you know, the activities, where I stayed, where I ate, what I learned, what I noticed about the culture, all that. So getting right into it, we started this trip in Tokyo, went to Osaka, Kyoto, then back to Tokyo again. And the first hotel we stayed at was the K5. Now, as you can see, this hotel is fantastic. I give it a good nine out of 10, even though I think it has four stars out of five. It should definitely be a five star in my opinion. It's just a gorgeous hotel. We had the junior suite. If you notice, this room has no TV because it's really about the intimacy with the person that you're there with, as well as a emphasis on acoustic. So every room is soundproofed. There's two speakers above this giant shelf that's like right behind the bed, kind of acting as a headboard. And then you also have a record player and they give you like 50 records that have little tags on there that says like day or night just so you kind of know the vibe but it's miles davis it's a whole bunch of like japanese artists you never heard of and you got everything on there from calypso to jazz to some r b oh and the part of town where we're staying in is called chuo so chuo city is like the financial district as much as i understand it so it was kind of sleepy but perfect for our first like foot into tokyo and this more chill leg of the trip gave me plenty of time to design our grills and I already told y'all about this in my last pickups video, but the first place you went to was Grills Jewels. And this place really felt like back home. I'm from Oakland, California, if y'all don't know. And the grill shops there felt just like this. From the pictures on the wall, the leather couch, the display cases with the bootleg watches, all that. And on top of that, Hot 9-7 was playing in the background. And this is one of the first times that I realized that Japanese people don't do nothing halfway whatsoever, nothing. The whole situation from like how they printed the logo on the outside of the door to how they decorated everything in the place, you can see there's a respect for the culture that you see in New York or the South, or like I said, in Oakland. They take that culture and they do it all the way and I felt like I was transported there you know what I mean so the level of care and respect for me translates to cultural appreciation and that was huge for me so yeah crazy so after six days in Chuo City we packed our bags and went over to Shibuya and this is when our trip really picked up when we stayed at the Trunk Hotel This part of the trip is when I had two people come to town, one of my best friends from New York and my cousin from here in LA. And us just kind of like kicking it at the hotel, hanging out, talking, sharing how our trip's been so far. It was just something special about that. It was one of those moments where like, I was just really happy, man. Like I could have had some, you know, some happy tears just looking back on it. It was magical, man. And it, you know, it's, it's simple, but you're talking about people that A, went out of their way to come out here for my birthday, which was tight. Two, you're experiencing a very foreign and new experience with very familiar people, you know? And we can all kind of reflect and talk about like how far we've come, you know? I think, especially for me and my man, Jeremy, he's an anime nerd like me. He's been wanting to come here since he was like 10, just like me. So very special moments he and I had together just like talking about it and like, you know, just being on the same wave exactly. Anyway, back to the trip, we hit the Shibuya streets. I'm not gonna lie, I was super surprised of how dense the city is. It's probably like five times as dense as New York. 
and New Yorkers don't believe that when I tell them, but I'm telling you, the way that they use real estate, I don't know. It's like organized, but very populated at the same time. Like you'll be on the main streets and stuff where a lot of people are, a lot of shops are, then you'll dip into like a little alleyway corner and it's completely empty from like one or two people. It's very, very interesting and almost a little overwhelming. You know what I mean? I was there for three weeks and I still didn't do everything. I put it that way. Oh, and it's also hella quiet, like quiet, quiet. Like you're not hearing people screaming. No one's disturbing the peace. Like you'll even see signs and like elevators and restaurants that tell you like, don't mess up the vibe for everybody else. Like keep your voice, you feel me? Like very interesting, right? But again, it's that respect for the next person. Crazy. And just like everybody says, the streets are hella clean. There's not really any trash cans anywhere. Kind of are expected to eat or drink whatever Whatever you're eating or drinking at the place you get it from and drop it off so it's very common to see people on the street like when you get street food or you get it from like a little restaurant like say you have one of those restaurants that don't have seating you just grab some food people will grab the food eat it right there they're kind of step you know step away from the line eat it right there and then toss it you know if they take it with them then they usually have like some type of to-go container or something or they take their trash itself and put it in their bag that's why you see everybody has a bag dudes ladies old young whatever because it's a society of people that want to take care of the place around them so it's culturally embedded that like you got to carry a bag because what if you got trash right and because of that you go to restaurants or like coffee shops or whatever you'll see baskets on the ground under every seat where you can put your bag or hooks on the wall to hang your bag it's like it's very well thought out again just to support the societal standards of taking care of the people around you and taking care of the land around you but it's not just that the public restrooms are also spotless look at this bathroom that that I found in a random shopping mall and how clean it is. And look at this view as well. Two things that I've never seen back home. Not saying that it doesn't exist. I just don't know a public space that has so many people in it that is this well kept. Again, very foreign to me, but I liked it. And as I'm sure you can guess, we did a whole bunch of shopping, but our very first tour came from Reggie himself from The Casual. If you guys do not subscribe to this YouTube channel yet, you definitely should. He's been living in Japan for like a decade, super fluent in Japanese but he's from Los Angeles. So really, really cool to hang out with him. We FaceTimed, we've talked a lot, but we've never seen each other in person. So it was a lot of love having him show us around to some more, you know, brands that I did know, but some also some like cutty little underground around the corner you wouldn't know was there type spots. You know what I mean? So I felt like I got like a tour of a local from a local. It was really, really cool. And I will show you all that in the next video because it's all about shopping, but just, you know, just to give you the overview. Okay, so today we are doing go carts in the street. Y'all know how excited I am about this. You know, Mario Kart style with the costumes and all that. Not sure how long it'll be. I think it's like an hour ride. We'll have a guided tour situation so we can't go too crazy, but it'll be three of us, maybe four of us. Either way, uh, it should be a fun ride. And I think they give me a GoPro too that I can rent and give y'all like that first person point of view. So I'm excited. Now we got the whole gang here. Y'all ready? Ready. Oh. Hmm. Okay, I'm not mad at the teddy bear. I'm not mad at that. Let me see, let me see. I'm kind of liking the purple. I'm not gonna hold you. How you say tiger in Japanese? I don't know. What you got? What is this? Teddy bear? Put your head down. Uh, uh, oh, that is a chipmunk. That is, is Alvin. It? That's Alvin. Is it? For sure. All right. And I got Pikachu. Let's go. Before we go on tour, I will need to explain you a, a lot of things about the cart. And after that, the rules and laws we have, okay? You good? I think it's on. Yeah. We out here in these uh, Tokyo streets. Right. We're drifting in our cart. You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> We also took a visit to Asakusa, had some really bomb tonkatsu, very, very delicious. And of course we went to the Asakusa temple, or is it called the shrine? Either way, that was a really great cultural experience, kind of seeing how people pray and believe and observing the heritage of everything. Very, very crowded as you can see, definitely a tourist attraction. And here's the outfit I wore for anybody who's wondering. But yeah, the whole area was beautiful, great experience. 
Oh, and I almost forgot, we also went to this digital art museum called Team Lab Planets. And that was really fun. It was really interesting. It was beautiful. It was a great time. It's always good to take in the art of a place when you go there, right? It's another pillar of the culture. But a fair warning, if you do go, either wear shorts or pants that are easily roll upable, because you will be walking in water that is going to be about calf or knee high. So just be ready for that. Don't play yourself. But yeah, we really got to just feel like a bunch of tourists, took some good pictures. It was cool. While we're waiting to check into our hotel here, I'ma jump in and just say the train ride from Tokyo to Osaka on the bullet train was way easier because of this video right here. So I'll link it down below and put a card up here if you are planning to go to Japan. It breaks down exactly what you need to do, especially if you have a whole bunch of baggage and like large luggage like we do, because you gotta book it ahead of time and it's a certain seat. It's a whole bunch of details to it. Just watch the video, okay? You'll see what I'm talking about. western looking room that we've had this whole time. You already see the fits. What are you talking about? Crazy. Okay, a couch couch. A little couch. Yes. A little juice. Wait, what's in there? I see something peeking through behind you. Peeking through? Oh, that's the closet. Oh. Fire. Okay, a little his and her sink. You already got the ring light built in so you can get all your, all your makeups done. Oh my. Oh, it's a roomy bath too. Gorgeous. Let's take in that view a little bit real quick. Now we only stayed in Osaka for two days, but I did have a little time to catch a little sumo wrestling. It was just on regular like Channel 7 TV. This is a, this is a sport. Like these, Wait. these guys be putting in work. And I didn't realize like it was really big out there. Uh oh, uh oh, all that all confidence. All that confidence didn't help. It did not help. You're out the ring. Uh, it didn't help. 
But the main reason we were in the city in the first place, which I'm sure y'all can guess, is because of Universal Studios, of course. Now, while I show you my outfit, here's two things that I've never seen in my life that I saw at Universal. One, while you're waiting for the Spider-Man ride, don't you know when you're in line for a ride and like sometimes you go inside and they just like show you different set pieces. They just give you stuff to look at while you're waiting, right? So we're in line for Spider-Man and they're showing the projector on the wall of the 90s cartoon that I grew up on. So you're watching the 90s American cartoon, but it's dubbed in Japanese, right? And I'm like, oh, this is what it feels like for the first time. I got the reverse of what I've been doing since middle school, right? Watching anime. So that was wild. And by the way, the Spider-Man ride, hella fun. They had a couple of characters in there I've never even seen. They might've just made them for the Japanese audience. I don't know, but it was a really fun ride. But anyway, the second thing, we went to go eat at this pizza place, by the way, which was like actually really good. We're waiting in line for it, observing and trying to see, okay, like after we get our food, we gotta find somewhere to sit. I want you to just imagine this. It's a seat for four, right? And there's a cell phone sitting there or a purse or something someone's keys. Just one small, very personal, and in America, stealable item. You don't put a phone on a table. Not to hold it and also not for you to, you know, not get it took. Like, that's just not what happens. You better put a person there if you want to save that seat. You feel me? So that was another culture shock for me that everybody just kind of respected it. And they didn't want the thing that the next person had, which is wild, you know? Because in America, somebody will take your seat and your phone and then help you look for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That was wild. But anyway, my favorite part about being at Universal was Super Nintendo World. I describe walking in there like being in the Truman Show. Remember that movie with Jim Carrey? It's like, as far as you can see, even up, like it looks like you're just in this world. Like you're, nothing else exists except for this world they built and everything just looks super realistic. Like you're in Mario 64. It was really, really cool. The best ride in my opinion, if you don't have a whole bunch of time when you go there, is gonna be Koopa's Challenge. You're basically doing Mario Kart in real life. That was great. And I also tried some food while I was in there. I had like this green shell. It was like a calzone type thing like you know it was bread over it in the green shell and inside like this sweet spaghetti sauce it was interesting but not great i didn't finish it and the drink was very very sweet i feel like a 10 year old would love it but yeah i didn't even finish either of those two things but it was good again i wanted to get the full experience the costumes are on point i'm not sure how toad even fits in that because i promise you like i'm doing this right now toad couldn't have been bigger than four feet maybe even shorter toad looked like you imagine how short toad is so i'm like how is a person in there unless it's a little person. It might be a little person. So that's the only thing I could think of. Either way, <laughs> it was a great time. So the next day we went straight to Kyoto. like a 15 minute train ride. And as you can see, the streets are not as full or as busy as Tokyo. You really get that old Japan feeling, especially those areas that have been preserved. And the hotel we stayed at was the Mitsui. This is definitely one, if not the most luxurious hotel we ever stayed in. I'll just let it speak for itself. You'll see. In Kyoto, we really didn't do much. We in our 30s, bro, so we was tired. It was like, yo, let's just spend these days to recharge, rest. I hit the gym, finally, because I had been slacking the whole time I was there. I did a few workouts in my room, but it was good to get a few gym sessions in. And some nights, our dinner was just 7-Eleven. And it's not just Kyoto. Every 7-Eleven has this variety of snacks and fresh food and actually, like, you know, meals you can have and still very affordable, just like here. But we did do two things while we were there. One, we went to the flagship store of iVan. It is an eyewear brand. Got these glasses, so you guys might remember what I'm talking about. The service there was 10 out of 10. They had an entire gallery upstairs where they kind of showed you the heritage of the brand and new collabs they had and stuff. And again, I'll break it all down in the next video I put out, but I'm telling you, this is like my best store experience that I had when I was in Japan, period. <laughs> 
And second was the Fushimi Inari Shrine. You know, like the bright orange ones. It was exactly as you expected. It was a bit of a hike though. So, you know, be ready to put a little walk in, but it wasn't that bad. And it is kind of crowded, but you're out in nature, you're enjoying the sights, and you're kind of checking the box on things you kind of have to do when you're in Kyoto. You kind of, you know, you gotta do that. You gotta do that. So we did it, it was good. And as it started getting dark, it was, it was kind of romantic. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, and I lied, there's a third thing too. We went to this Starbucks, I forget what part of town, but it's like the Starbucks. If you Google it, you'll find it. But it's like in this old town in Kyoto. And if you didn't know it was there, you might miss it because it's like a very little sign. You get in there, ceilings are low, and that's because the upstairs is fire. But anyway, the menu's totally different. One thing that I noticed and that I learned there is that, again, remember, because you're supposed to finish it while you're there, they even have a smaller size than our small because, you know, you want to finish it quicker. It's not as big. It's like maybe 10 ounces or something like that. So that was really interesting. Anyway, after we got our coffees we go upstairs to maybe get a seat but it was really crowded but as you can see it's the old school like take your shoes off to Tommy Matt situation and it was popping up there people were up there having fun they were laughing having conversations and kind of you know I guess it's the kicking spot in Kyoto so if you do go hopefully you're able to get a seat but it was definitely a cool cultural experience for sure and after that we headed back to Tokyo for another week and this is where I did all the shopping that I wanted to do because it was no point in shopping the first time and taking all that stuff with me on this whole trip right so all the window shopping we did i actually went back and got all the stuff and again like i said that'll be in the next vlog as well as this secret ramen spot that i found that my friend put me on to that's not on google maps but it's the best ramen place that i had period it was amazing oh and all the videos that helped me along this trip i will make sure to link down below just so you can see what i'm talking about but as you can see i feel like japan was amazing it was a great trip. I have no complaints whatsoever. Oh, and before I get out of here, I'm gonna answer a question that I got a lot when I asked y'all on Instagram. A lot of y'all asked me, how did I get treated out there as a black man? I was just a man. It was intense curiosity because, you know, the first look is like, yo, like I've never seen one of those before or we don't see a lot of, you know, brown people out here like that. But after that, that was it. The first glance, they're like, oh, okay. And then they go to minding their business. So I was definitely a foreigner, but I wasn't made to feel like I didn't belong there, if that makes sense. It was still love either way. I got a whole bunch of love. I have no complaints, like I said. If anything, they couldn't wait to see me. It was, yeah. I got asked if I was a rapper one time. That was interesting. But again, they don't, they don't really, they don't really know. But yeah, so like I said, I will link all the videos down below of stuff that helped me, any guides that helped me on my trip. Hopefully this was insightful for y'all. And after this, we are doing clothing and we are doing food vlog as well. So look forward to that. Thank y'all if you made it all the way to the end as always. And yeah, crazy. Anyway, peace. <laughs>